Hello, my dear friends. So we were discussing about chapter three, which is plant kingdom. We already had seen various systems of the classification, that like how different people propose artificial system of the classification, the natural system of the classification, phylogenetic system of the classification, and as the biology advanced further and further and scientific knowledge exploded, what happened? That many other methods start developing, and we had seen that many other branches of the classification came into being, and these methodologies like numerical taxonomy or chemotaxonomy uh, were introduced. So, cytotaxonomy we already have seen. So, after having seen this basic idea of how these plants or other organisms were classified historically by one person, then another person, and how it was improved eventually, and it is currently now in shape what we understand today. Right? <coughs> then we saw that plants have been from very ancient times, from very old times, they have been classified into several categories. We had seen that the most primitive category of the plants is algae and then bryophytes, pteridophytes and subsequently other plants. We will be discussing uh, in this chapter. So, we already had discussed some people about the algae and now in this chapter, in this lecture especially, we will focus on the algae group of the plants. Let me tell you here one more thing. We already have seen various features and introduction of the group algae. That what does it mean? What are their cellular features? What are their characteristics? What is their mode of nutrition? Those things we already have seen. We will see more detail in this lecture now and then we will discuss the category, the first category of the algae which is called as chloroicy or the green algae. Okay. So, uh, before going into the details, let me clarify one thing over here to you that now onwards in this chapter, what we are going to discuss, especially in algae, is not only the multicellular algae. but unicellular algae as well, ok? So, as you all know that multicellular algae is not the same plant and the unicellular algae is not the same plant, ok? Right? So, however, this multicellular as well as unicellular algae earlier in the older classification system they all were placed into the kingdom planktonic algae, but later on the unicellular algae were withdrawn from the kingdom planktonic and they were kept into the kingdom planktonic So now these unicellular algae belong to the kingdom planktonic They are not true members of the kingdom planktonic in the scheme of classification given by R. Okay? See, if you see from different point of view, some people may consider some uh, the old methods, some people may consider the new methods. Okay? The most accepted I have told you is the system which was given by us. But some people, even today, they follow the older pattern. Okay? So nobody can prevent them. If they feel comfortable in that, they are studying that because science has no boundaries. Okay, whoever wants to study is not going to as long as it is systematic and reproducible and experimentally verifiable, it's okay. So, now you should recognize that now we are in the group of the algae in the plant kingdom, we will be studying the unicellular algae, but in the high kingdom classification system of the data, they are not in the of the plant kingdom, they are in the of the kingdom protesta. But because classically from the older times, they have been studied under the 
So if I tell you certain example which is generic and unicellularly, don't get confused. According to the Whitaker's classification, unicellularly will go to the kingdom of Krishna and not in Okay? So we are very clear about it. So now we already had seen what is the uh, meaning of reality. They are the multicellular eukaryotic photovoltaic organisms with a thyroid body organization, right? They don't have a true tissue like structure or a thyroid body organization. Then we had seen that they are photoautotrophic and they contain the chlorophyll which helps in the We also had seen in the last lecture they are found that they may be unicellular, they may be elemental, they may be colonial. Okay. Now we will not go into much detail of that. We already had seen that uh, uh, what is the mode of uh, habitat? They mostly are aquatic. We had seen they live in the damp places. Okay. So I am not going to repeat those things. I am just telling you for a recap so that you just can connect to the previous things that you have been Okay. Now after having discussed the general features of the algae. And their morphology or the form and their habitat. Now we will focus on the reproductive behavior or reproduction of the So now under the title algae, we should write down subtitle reproduction. And in the reproduction, now we will study in general about reproductive processes which operate in the uh, category of the algae. Okay? It will apply in general to all the kinds of the algae. We are not going to discuss much detail over here, but just we will see what are the possibilities. Okay? So, as you all know, we are ready for this and we are ready to stay the of the product and we are ready to the of the Right? Two types of the reproduction are possible. In the asexual form, again, they will be duplicated in the production. And then they will be asexual. It's four So, in the vegetative reproduction, there will be many kinds of the reproduction. The most common is fragmentation. So, what happens in the fragmentation that the body of the algae or the thallus of the algae is broken down into several pieces and each fragment can grow into and develop into a new thallus or new algae or new organism. So, what will happen in the fragmentation? The thallus will be broken down into pieces will be broken down into several fragments and each fragment can go into new organism Right? Each thallus can grow into new organism. I hope that my writings are clear to you. So, this is what is observed in the vegetative mode of the reproduction, which is a kind of process of reproduction. Now, let us elaborate a little bit. It's what is the mode of reproduction. What will happen in the asexual is forced formation. This is also a kind of uh, Asexual mode of reproduction, here the asexual spores will be found and mostly mobile blue spores will be found. Okay? And these uh, zoo spores are very common in the algae. And what will happen? These spores will be mobile. Okay? Because they will be highly 
because of the flagella, the two spores will be most common type of the um, asexual spore which is found in the algae. Now, after having seen the asexual mode of reproduction, let us see what are the ways of sexual reproduction in the algae. So, for sexual reproduction, various kinds of the sexual spores will be found. As you all know, that in the sexual reproduction, the male and female gametes are essential. So, the male and female gametes need to be fused together so that they can result in the fertilization. Okay? So, here the fusion of gametes is a requirement. Fusion of male and female. Female gametes are created by sexual reproduction. So what will happen? The male gametes and female gametes may be of the similar size, may be of the similar size. So this kind of this reproduction thing is called as isogamous spores or isogamous type of the sexual reproduction. Okay? Then other type is where dissimilar or different kinds of the gametes will be there. This is called as inisogamous. Inisogamous kind of the sexual reproduction. So here this will not be similar, other will be dissimilar in the size. Okay. Here they will be similar in the isogamous. The third category is the in the two-gamous type, this is a very specific uh, type of the anisogamous So, there will be a big, large, non-gamous type. So, female, then, this is bigger, large. Right? Non -mobile. Okay? <coughs> but the male in the two way of time, you can continue after this, you can continue over here. So the male will be small. Okay? And this will be motile. So, smaller than that will be motile. So, this male gamete can unite or choose the female gamete in the two gamers type of the So, these three types of the uh, reproductive uh, gametes are found in the, uh, in the sexual reproduction in the animal. Now, what are the examples? For the isogamous type, they may be flagellated gametes. Okay? So both the gametes might be flagellated. And for flagellated, the example is the eubotrium. Eubotrium is the name of the animal. And then it might be non flagellated isogamous. That means both the gametes may not be highly fragile. So the example of the non-fragilated gamete is the spirogamma. Spirogamma. So spirogamma is non-fragilated. So so fragilated means what? Is correct, right? Non-fragilated means that is correct. So what will happen? Both are non-fragilated. Or they are flagellated. So here both are flagellated and mobile, and here both are non flagellated and non mobile. So in this way you can distinguish between the flagellated and non flagellated. Then for anisogamous, the example is so I can make an anisogamous slide. Right? So here you can write Eurodina. Uh, Eurodina is an ID, which shows the anisogamous. Kind of this spore in the sexual reproduction. And 
for the Uga Muslim production, we will have the people, which is the kind of normal and you also have the one box. So one box is the similarity and this figure is given in one direction. So people say one box, they do sexual reproduction by the means of the Neurodegenerate does the sexual reproduction by means of the anisogamous spore formation. And neurotrix and spirogyna do the sexual reproduction by means of the isogamous spore formation. Okay? So now we have discussed in enough detail about the sexual reproduction method uh, in the uh, reproductive method or ways of the reproduction in the case of the animal. Now after having discussed the reproduction, we will discuss what is its utility okay, to the human welfare. So how algae are used to the how do we to the human welfare? So now Now you can write a mix of that uses of the algae or uses for the human welfare. Okay, the mix of that. So as you all know that algae are the very microscopic, the small organisms, usually, right? <coughs> they may be large open like structure, also like giant caps, A B L P we had seen earlier, right? But Usually they are small small organisms and they are very abundant in the marine environment. So in the ocean, the algae are the primary producer. So they are primary producer in marine environment. What is the meaning of it? Do you know? I think you would have studied in your high school. What is the meaning of the producer? Producer means if an organism is capable of capturing the carbon dioxide and sunlight energy or energy of the sunlight and then synthesize the food from it, this is called a, uh, these organisms are called a producer. So in the food chain, some organisms is autotrophic and they synthesize the food on their own and then this food is ingested or fed upon by next level of the organisms in the food chain. So in this way one kind of the organism is dependent on the other kind of organism, the next level of the organism or the topic level is dependent on this level of the organisms. So in a nutshell, in a way we can say that all the organisms, uh, except the microscopic organisms, you can say that all the life on earth which sustains in a way is dependent on the plant because plant synthesize food and on the food which is synthesized by the plant, the entire world and all the organisms on earth in one way or the other, they depend on them. So now, because as you all know that ocean contributes around 75% uh, of the up surface, right? And of this huge marine environment which is there, there are no trees or no big plants, no forests in the ocean, rather you have the tiny uh, algae which capture the sunlight and produce the food okay? So they are actually sort of responsible for about half of the biomass or half of the food which is uh, captured, which is prepared on the earth. So they contain half of the water to the So how do we make food? You all know that CO2 plus H2O. This will be 
कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नीड्स टू बी फिक्स्ड अगेन इन टू द फूड मॉलिक्यूल अदरवाइज द अमाउंट ऑफ द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड दिस विल कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग इन विल इंक्रीज एंड दिस विल लीड टू द डिस्टरबेंस इन द एनवायरमेंट ओके इट्स टू बी ग्लोबल वार्मिंग लेट अस नॉट गो इनटू द डिटेल ऑफ दैट नाउ एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो दिस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नीड्स टू बी फिक्स्ड एंड दिस इज फिक्स्ड टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस and the primary chemicals are responsible for the photosynthesis so half of the carbon dioxide concentration in the cross the entire world is done by the algae now they because they are primary producers they form the basis of the food chain food chain cannot survive without the sustain itself If the algae is to start doing photosynthesis, so they are the first component or the base of the food chain. So the first level is formed by the algae, which synthesizes this food, and then the entire food chain, one above the other, are together. This is dependent on this lower level of the production of the algae. Okay. Now this one is about the global food chain, the ability of global industrialization. If we consider the direct movement of the human being here, because we are kind of the plants, so many of the species are actually invisible. So many of the algae are invisible. So at least seventy species of the algae are marine algae are known to be. Do the food. For example, there is one algae. Its name is Lagenaria. You see, so Lagenaria is an algae which is used as food by a lot of people. There is another algae for algae. Next example is Tamarasa. Okay, so these are the names of different algae which are used as food by different people. So this one is about the food. Now they are also used in industry. So many of the industries are dependent on the uh, algae. There are specific Group of the compounds called the hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. So what are hydrophobic? These are compounds with water holding capacity. So these are compounds with the water holding capacity. So they can be used to make gel and jelly. So gel and jelly making may can be used for that. For example, they can be used in the cosmetic. Okay, they can be used in the food industry. Like when 
ice cream. So there are many ice creams where the hydrochloride are added. They can be used for the biotechnology industry. They are used for the growing microbes in that industry. Okay? So in this way, there are several uses of this uh, algae. Uh, let me tell you certain uh, examples of this hydrochloride, which are very, really, very really useful. So, example of the hydrochloride is agar. Okay, you must have heard the name of the agar. So agar is a very routinely used hydrochloride. And it is used in terms of laboratory samples. Lot of bacteria are familiar or growing on that. They are used for eating berries and berries. And grow by the water. Similarly, there is another compound called Paragene. Paragene and there is another compound called Paragene also. Okay. Yes. There is a bad one. Paragene. This is another compound which is very useful. Agar Agar, Paragene and there is another compound called Paragene. This is of course kind of hydrochloride and it will be very often. So these are the uses of the hydrochloride. Then there is one species called chlorella. This is an algae and it will be very similar. And this is actually highly uh, protein rich. And this is used by the uh, used by the stress predators. Those people who go in the stress, they use this capsule as a food supplement. So as a food supplement. So in this way now we have seen so many uses of the uh, algae. We have seen how they can be directly used for eating, for laboratory purposes, for industry purposes, for our environment, for purification of the environment that means for converting the carbon dioxide into the biomass and then releasing the oxygen which we breathe in. So you can imagine, you can guess that how useful the algae are, okay, and how abundant they are. They are very common organism in the oceanic environment, in the aquatic environment, in addition to being living on the land places in the land environment. So now we have discussed the general features about algae. Uh, we have seen their reproductive mode, their habitat, their uh, mode of nutrition, their usage. Now the algae are divided into three classes. So we will study the first group of the algae. So the first category of the algae is called chloroplankton. Or something to pronounce here, chloroplankton. Okay? So chloroplankton or chloroplankton. They are also called as green algae. Okay, so there are three categories of the algae: chlorophyce, rhodophyce, and phyophyce. So first, we will study about the chlorophyce. What is the 
common features. What are the common examples? Uh, and uh, we will see uh, how do they look like. So these things. Uh, what are their examples? So in the global because they are green really, so you can see that they will help chlorophyll molecules, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Okay. So chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, B are the dominant photosynthetic pigments in the green algae. So there are so many kinds of the chlorophylls, chlorophyll A, B, C, D, E like that. But in the chlorophyceae or green algae, for chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, they are the dominant chlorophyll molecules. And this is very important, it will ask many times in the examination. Okay. Then we can consider the cell or cell structure. Okay. How do the cell of the green algae look like? So, algae wall, that all the plants contain the cell wall, right? And cell wall is made up of the cell group. So, the cell wall is made up of the cell group. The cell wall is made up of the cell group, but the outer layer of the cell wall is coated with the cell group. Okay? So suppose this is another kind of the polysaccharide, I will see it forms the outer layer of the same one. Then we will saw that there will be a nucleus because it will be a carbonic and there will be chlorophyll molecules which will be present in chloroplast. Right? So the chloroplast will be there in the green algae and this chloroplast has wide variety wide variety of shapes and sizes and many times the shape of the chloroplast they are used as the distinguishing feature or as a primary criteria to distinguish or to, uh, to assign a particular class or grouping to those organisms. Okay. So, now let us see what are different kinds of the shapes of the So, the shape of the chloroplast may be this like, it may be plate like, okay, it may be oval, it may be ribbon like, it may be spinal, So this slide is also called as this point. Then there will be top shape or there will be a network line. They are called as reticulate line. So in this way there are so many shapes. So top line will be this will be the type of the flow class. This is how it will look like. If I like, this will be looking like ribbon. This is like this. This iron will look like this. Then the two layers will look like this. Like a mesh, like a mesh. Okay? So one will look like over here. Okay, so in this way, you will have a wide variety of the morphological features for the chloroplast and 
some certain species or certain varieties of hay the reticulate kind of uh, chloroplast certain other varieties like cup shaped chloroplast so in this way they make the species identifiable uh, identifiable okay so this was about the cellular structure now how do you like so what is the cause of the mercury so they may be unicellular they may be filamentous okay filamentous means one thing is the other thing the other thing the other thing so many things is done then they may be colonial or colonial what will be in the colony line you will have so many things coming together coming to colony okay for example one ball it is given for the diagram for which is given in your textbook and this is the same here the regular sometimes so colonial argument that are used here this will be the form and then this algae will also have certain storage body because once they are from the photosynthesis in the case of food they must be able to store this food for sustainable energy so for that there are certain storage body usually one or more piling body piling or piling body okay they will be present what is piling body They are the storage body made up of the protein plus starch. Okay. Then there is another category of the uh, storage body where oil droplets, okay, so fatty molecules may be stored in the oil droplets as a storage body. and they can be used later on when you are getting it so this was the problem the nutrition of the energy now we will see the mode of production so in the mode of reproduction they can do reproduction by vegetative reproduction in the kind of This is the reproduction. So, what will happen in the vegetative reproduction? The most common is the fragmentation. Okay. The most common is fragmentation. And second type is the asexual spore formation. So, in the asexual spore, as we already had seen in the introduction to of the algae, that the zoo spore formation is most common. So here. In the green algae, zoo spores will be formed in a structure called the zoo spore algae. Okay, and this is what we call the regular mutation. Okay, so then the third method will be sexual reproduction. In the sexual reproduction, what will happen? There will be children of the baby, and there will be sexual spores which will be formed. So, sexual spores may be isolated, may be inisolated, or may be covalent. Okay. So, isolated, inisolated, and covalent. All three kinds of things. Sexual spores are formed in the green algae, and now after having seen how do they look like at the cellular level, at the subcellular level, level which is chloroplast, and the molecule which is present in the chloroplast, chloroplast A and B, then the cell wall, and then what is the body form? How do they look like? So it, it may be a single cell, unicellular, or many cells can come together to form a filament-like structure. Or many cells can assemble together in a 
colonial like structure so they will be called as colonial structure so then we saw that inside the cell they may store certain molecules for later on use which is called as storage body pyrimoid and pyl complex then we have seen the reproductive uh, ways so asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction in asexual reproduction the vegetative fragmentation and asexual spores and in the sexual reproduction the three kinds of the spores which are found they will all be found in the case of the chlorophyll or the mineral now what are the famous examples because the scientific community is very important and topic is for the analysis So, in Dr. Gar 3.1a, in your textbook, the first organism is worked out. Okay, it has been it is formed a colonial structure by which cells are arranged together to form a colonial structure. Then you have to move along with the structure in the first place. In the second place, it is called the neurotrip. Okay, it also belongs to the green algae. So, worked out the neurotrip. Then you have the algae. Okay, then I go on. Then then the spiral goes on. The spiral goes on. Then 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 the spiral goes on. So these are the famous and uh, well-known examples, and you must remember their names. So now we have finished the chlorophyll or green algae over here. In the next lecture, we will study the other categories of the algae. So we will stop over here. Don't forget to note the important point. If you have any doubts, just get back to me. Okay? Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.